Hello and welcome to our season finale at the end of 2022 and welcome back Richie. <laughs> yeah, it is so good to have you back. I know you've been super busy with your new job and that's why I've been running the interviews myself but welcome back. It's been awesome to be back and I've just watched a couple of your videos just lately and seriously <laughs> they are so cool. It made me believe that what we, we did this year over the all this year is to, to give hope to some people and to, to understand how people can recover in oh, certain yeah. ways. It may have worked for this person, it may have worked for some other people, but we just want to give some solutions to people out there that, that are willing to and open enough to try something that's either different or there may be some other ways that we can do it. And on that note, I might add, awesome stuff actually for you to front up whilst I've been going, but also the work that you've put in uh, this year in terms of editing our videos as well. There is a lot of work involved in it. There, it's time consuming. So from my heart to yours, I really oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mel, for that. And I've freaking enjoyed what we did this year. But I know we've had a lot of people say some wonderful things over this period, you know, that recovery story you, you pushed out recently and, and that warms my heart, you know? Totally. I actually have a story for you, Richie. Um, cool. I had a client recently um, who has had chronic fatigue syndrome and he went online, ran a search, Richie Barnett chronic fatigue syndrome, found the recovery project interview where I interviewed you about your recovery and he watched it and then he went on and watched the one of you interviewing me and then he went straight to my website and watched the free 45 minute webinar and went straight from that to the two hour next steps webinar so this is all in the space of one afternoon he watched all four things and by the time he went to bed that night all his chronic fatigue syndrome was gone serious yeah I was like, really? All, all gone? Really? Yeah, he said all the symptoms were gone. He, he did end up still coming to attend the switch because he was still struggling with some anxiety. But all his chronic fatigue symptoms that he'd had for over a year vanished having watched your story, my story, and then two webinars. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's what that I alone love. makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> it does. And, you know, like, I mean, I know you've done some amazing stuff with a lot of clients that... So, you know, Absolutely. I get so many chronic fatigue sufferers over the around the world call me up just to say, I saw your thing on uh, YouTube. Can we have yeah. a chat? My, my response is, of course, when yeah. do you want to do it? You know, it's time because I, we know exactly how that felt. And so totally. just to give them that voice that, you know, and hopefully give them some tools to help them, but more, more the fact that there is, that you're not the only one in the world that's going through this alone. Absolutely. And that some people recover because I know when I was sick, you know, I, I could never find anyone who'd ever got better. If you look on Google, you'll, you know, find that they say only 5% of people ever get better. Well, you know, that's not my experience. And among my clients, 80 to 90% get better. But in the mainstream, that's the figure you see. And so there's a lot of hopelessness yeah, surrounding there is. chronic fatigue and other chronic illness. And there doesn't need to be the hopelessness. It's just getting your hope back and start shifting some symptoms. If I had someone like yourself and, and that had a program, I'll tell you what, I would have jumped all in, you know? What do you think the common thread was, do, do you think? Mm, great question. Um, I actually wrote a list today, a trusty list, oh, nice. of all the interviews that we've done and what was the underlying theme to calm the stress response, to allow healing in their body. And that was certainly relevant for me. Um, and stopping faulty illness thinking patterns um, came up quite a lot. Um, and then we had releasing grief and guilt and forgiveness. That was quite a common theme, I think. Yeah. And then we had a whole lot of people who it seemed to be around lack of self-love and lack of self-worth and fe not feeling good enough. Um, that theme came in. Um, fear of recovery came up a couple of times, which is an interesting one that I think people don't really like to admit but it's quite real you know if you've been sick for a decade it's quite scary to even think about reconnecting with the world and what it would be like if I was healthy and I was you know needing to to front up to working again when I've been out of the workforce for 10 years or for me it's it was around exactly that you know unpacking the emotions mm. stress is one of the key ones I think that popped up a lot 
trauma and how that affected trauma, yeah. them. Trauma, absolute trauma. I, I mean, mm. that stress and that guilt part, because that's pretty much the, the CFS model, yeah. really, the yeah. emotional model I think most of them live in. Mm. Um, the deprivation and restricted uh, of eating, the emotional eating patterns yeah. of some based on trauma and and the like. Um, and that was really compelling to me because it's the, I guess for us in New Zealand now, it's the biggest wave of mental health and wellbeing, which is the most, unfortunately, the deadliest mental health one in New Zealand. So it's yeah. a wave that's coming through New Zealand at the moment. And there's a lot of people being affected by it. And it's a very mm. difficult illness to get out of. So um and mm, being so hard us. on ourselves really you know there's a lot of yeah. stuff where we're you know in, in terms of the inner critic and how we think a lot you know we're really hard on ourselves in terms of that internal dialogue um you know and i think that pops up a lot around self-love self self-care um how we self-sabotage a lot our confidence yeah. uh, when we're going through trauma and relationships so there's a lot there's a lot of that sort of hinging around and the three things or the two things that focus a lot for me when I hear that is what do we focus our attention on what do things mean in our life because nothing has yeah. a meaning to the meaning you give it right mm. and so that was really interesting that model popped up a lot and it really sort of arched over all these things that we we listen mm. to well I think there were many factors that yeah. caused my chronic fatigue well, but the head injury was certainly one of the big ones um and yeah, I think I was just very much stuck in an illness loop after so many years that my stress levels were right up here. Oh. And from the injury, my resting pulse was 118 beats a minute before I'd even sat up in the mornings. Wow. So my body was just cranking. Even six months after my accident, it was that high. Um, and my mm. cortisol levels would triple the normal healthy rate, yeah. which is a measure of stress. Mm. So I was in a massive stress overload. So that just drained all my other body yeah. systems. And, and then all the worries about being so sick just fuel the stress more and fuel more yeah. illness and so on. So important that stress response mode, eh? To understand it a bit more, eh? Totally. Because people, because people don't. No. <laughs> yeah. I always make a focus board in January. So I have like yeah. a collage on my wall of I'm all most... my gold for the year. Mm. And um, this this year in January when I was making my vision board I thought what do I really want this year and I was like I really want to do that recovery series with Richie and I know, oh, wow. you know we'd, we'd met last April so I hadn't spoken to you in over six months I made the focus board I actually looked online Richie Barnett TV studio found a picture of you in a TV studio put it on my focus board you phoned me about 10 days later and we're like oh we've got to do that project let's get on and do it let's start recording next week the law of attraction mm -hmm. so Yay. focus boards are awesome I, i'm right into them if you want something to happen put it on your board what what i didn't put on the board was then us being on tv promoting this series because i just assumed that that would happen um but you know the board, it can't. yeah it's not the I, same um, it won't, won't so it might still happen let's hope makes, we get it the, yeah absolutely it's, i should put a picture on on the board next year of us actually really you know getting to share this series with the world we have done 26 interviews this year so that's a you know i feel proud of us that's yeah. pretty cool so here are the highlights of our stories for 2022 it's been incredible these are just the small snippets of what it looked like this year and here is my favorite of the episodes is my mate tawara nico take it away bro I saw a shadow hanging from the rafters. It was Letitia. Oh. She'd, um, oh, how awful. Said, yeah, she'd hung herself in the shed. So, um, you know, it was, it was probably mm. the most harrowing thing that I'd ever had to deal with. And um, you go through all these different stages of emotions of um, mm. you know, anger, frustration, uh, guilt. You know, the old uh, view that you have about going to counsellors is lying on this couch and then you're asking you all these questions. And it was, it was nothing like that. It was really about... You know, just going along and, and having a chat and just talking about how you're feeling and stuff. And it was probably the best thing that I ever did. Felt like someone grabbed a red hot poker and just shoved it through the middle of my leg. It was just really white, intense, hot, searing pain up into my groin. So when the ambulance guy turned up, I said, mate, my leg's giving me some grief here. Have you got anything for the pain? 
He says, oh, Mr. Nico, listen, we don't have any drugs in our ambulances in Huntley because people break in and they steal everything. I said, oh. oh. <laughs> 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 I said, he's killing me, mate. Have you got to say, you went and got a St. John's bag, opened it up and pulls out some Panadol. I said, fucking Panadol. That's Panadol. <laughs> Doctor comes in, he says, oh, Mr. Nico, listen, I've got some good news and some bad news. I said, oh, yeah, well, what's the bad news, Doc? He said, well, you have to stay in hospital for another 18 months to two years. Yeah, Mr. Nico, if you have the leg amputated just below the knee, you'll be out of hospital in two weeks. You'll be up and running in six to seven weeks. And that's it. Cut the bloody thing off. I want to get home and look after my kids and make sure they're mm. all good. He came back to New Zealand, lost his way there, lost his leg. Totally. And, but because he's, because he's such a tough human being and he understands the role of what mindfulness is and how to mm. set your mindset... Um, but he went yeah. through a period there where he, that he lost his way, you know, right. in a big yeah. way. It just, that's mm. just what it was, understandably. Yeah. Yeah. I think the one I felt the most emotional about was um, when Nikki shared about her 16-year-old daughter dying in that canyoning accident. Oh, man, that one. I just had tears come up so many times during the interview. But I felt I left the interview with this feeling of such upliftment policeman came to the door and uh, he was a young policeman and as soon as we saw him it was just you knew. it was like a, a this wailing through our home as as people mm. just kind of you know everybody lost the plot really and um and he just looked mm. at us and said I'm sorry to tell you that um Natasha has has died mm. and so Tears as you can now. imagine <laughs> yeah so it's just it's awful been, every parent's nightmare yeah. But Andy and I very deliberately sat down in those first few weeks and we said, how are we going to live through this? Wow. Um, we couldn't change what had happened, but we could, we could choose how we were going to um, do grief. It's totally life again. I mean, my life today doesn't look what I thought it would look like. No. But I'm still enjoying my life. Mm. And and I find I'm honouring those people that I love by the way I'm living my life. You know, I lost my brother when, when I was yeah. 18. And then mm. I was looking after and had a good connection with him over the year with Keanu Bowen, who is, um, you know, I, I just have to say that, you know, he passed away last week and it was an emotional roller coaster ride. But, you know, I just yeah. want to honour his family, Angela, um, with this video as well, just to... To say that you know we, we're always thinking of the ones that are past and everyone that's passed totally. throughout this year. Angel was another good mate that passed away, and yeah, yeah, just got to honour those people that have passed away this year. Yeah, totally, and and all the processes of grief that that yeah. sends through people. True. Yeah. yeah. How how did you move through the grief over your brother then? I framed it really quite differently when I was coming through. I, I, I get things out real quick and I don't dwell on it a lot, but I did, I did have this, the way I got around it was that I was going to honor my brother. Right. Um, through, obviously I was, I, had a, I was pretty goal orientated around sports. Yep. I wanted to make, to make him feel proud and put right. him as and honor him as once I get there. So that was yeah. my driver and the meaning I placed on it at that time. Wow. That's really cool. So you're like making a really sort of positive spin on it. I'm going yeah. to give myself an amazing life to honour yeah, this to honor person. My, and... my bar, yeah, Nice. So that's the way that's I got around it. Uh, with good support and, and the way yeah. that we do it, particularly Marty's and that, we, we have a good grieving response. You know, we, yeah. we sit there, we talk about it, we unpack yeah. a lot of that stuff. You want to say yeah. it, just being around your brother in a coffin yeah. for three days yeah, absolutely helps. Totally. Well, Shona, the, the breast cancer interview that we did, um, she lost her um, her Rarotongan husband um, to, and she said the same thing, that having his body in the house for the three days was, you know, amazingly wow. healing. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know, people yeah. talking about his life and and crying and you going yeah. up on that emotional roller coaster ride, but you can just say anything and yeah. just, just get everything out. It's such a beautiful grieving way of doing things and yeah, yeah not having to stuff your emotions in because the more yeah. that people stuff their emotions in they get trapped in the body and then illness comes out later yes. on 
That's right. So, cancer is such a scary word. Like it is probably the illness people fear the most. And Shona had an amazing recovery to the point where she actually says, cancer was my blessing. So let's hear some amazing words from Shona. How do you feel looking back at that journey? I'd say it was a blessing. Nice, that's so cool. Yeah. That journey was a blessing. Yeah. I mean, I don't get caught up in sports stuff anymore. Right. Nice. Um, you know, life is more joyful. Mm. You find yeah. joy in small things. Nice. Uh, every day is a blessing. I love that. You don't make excuses for not exercising because exercise is also very important. So mm. you don't make an excuse no, not to exercise. Don't. You just get out and do it. Yeah. You know that this Take is care of part body. of your body healing. Um, mm. You tend to gravitate towards lovely foods. You still mm. have a glass of wine. You still <laughs> enjoy treats, but yeah. you are also nourishing your mm. body as well. Um, you just get on and live a healthy mm. life. And when you look forward to the future now, yeah. how do you feel? I feel excited. Nice. One of the other recovery stories that was fascinating this season was Jessie Hodges, the Olympic cyclist. Having not been able to ride her bike for nine months, she was back on her bike after day one for five minutes. She was on her bike for half an hour by about day four, I think it was. Um, she was back in the New Zealand Olympic cycling team. Um, within about six weeks, I think it was, and now she's like hoping for the next Olympics. Um, I'd walk up one flight of stairs and would be pretty much gasping for air. Wow. One flight, yeah, and I was meant to be an elite. Yeah, athlete, you're like, like mega fit. Went to sort of the whole holistic approach sort of thing. Um, and then I stumbled across the switch. By one month after the course, you were doing three hour rides. Yep. That's fantastic. Like I was, I was well. I wasn't having the thoughts. I wasn't having the symptoms. Um, yeah, I was. I was better. I was able to train. I was able to. Um, I was able to think about live and not hurt inside. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was yeah. a lot, of, like a lot of things, mm. I suppose. So yeah, that's was sort of when I knew I was healthy. Yeah. So then I booked a trip, trip to Europe and rode my bike overseas. <laughs> Oh, so. I think we need to get that out more and more that, mm. you know, that stress response is so important. Totally. And if we don't manage it, it'll manage us, you know? Absolutely. And to manage that stress response, you've got to clear the emotions that are fueling it. I liked, um, actually, Steve Gurney's one was quite yeah. good because of just his association with searching for love from his parents. Yeah. Then he had to work hard. So he could be seen and felt love, and that's what he associated working hard. So that was his, yeah. that was his anchor, really, for a long, long yeah. time, wasn't it? The harder I work, the more I get loved. When I won my first Coast to Coast, I remember the elation. I get goosebumps thinking about it now. Wow, I'm that's cool. Now. It was only a few months, and I thought, oh, it felt good for a while, but okay, I have to win two races to, to, mm. to finally get there. And that left me with a really disappointed taste in my mouth that I never received that or achieved the 10 wins mm, but somehow the 10th would have been different wouldn't it Steve <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, well, nice number. nine <laughs> wins yeah, it's good, not yeah. enough but 10 good that job. would have been happiness for life yeah and that now that's where I, I got super depressed for two years suicidal depression I had to get a lot of help life delivers all these opportunities i.e stress or trauma <laughs> for us to learn or learn mm. from or I'll lose our health over. Um, I'm so grateful. <laughs> I'm getting a bit emotional. So, it's so, so good. I'm going to the switch because it's, it's showing me that I actually suffer from anxiety. And oh. you know, as I went through the switch, I, um, I was able to train longer. And, you know, I'm, we're talking about like some days in the weekends, you know, I'll be doing eight to 10 hours training to simulate the race. <laughs> to go I can't even imagine doing that. Oh, you, you might be able to. Can no, you I don't that? think. No. 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 <laughs> Just the, the tenacity, the, the, the spirit that you have inside you to continue to do what you do in the way that you've done it. To me, that I've, I've got such respect for you. And the way that you've you've mm. conducted over your years of just pushing your body to the limit. So for that, Steve, mm. I thank you and I appreciate what you've done, brother. It's, it's inspired me big time. Yeah. I found the the one of Nadine with fertility issues. That one oh, yeah. had a really like sort of gentle spiritual flow to it. It was 
It felt quite trippy even running the interview. <laughs> like. Really talking out loud with her and making big body movements of like just, I guess, um, manifesting that I was open and ready to receive this child and to, mm. to, to, to prepare my body and to spiritually ask this child mm. to please come if it would. Mm. Um, that was wow. really powerful for me. That was really. Yeah, I can hear the emotion right there. Yeah. That sounds like it was a really beautiful kind of connecting to your baby experience. Yeah, yeah. For asking the spiritual world, I guess, to say, look, mm. here I am. I'm doing what I can. If you want to come, here I am. Mm. Tell me if there's something else I need to do. I can't force this. It's out mm. of my hands. Like I can yeah. only try. I can only do certain things to make this possible. Mm. All your wishes, everything, Christmas, birthdays, everything has come true in your whole life. It feels like your whole life that you've been working towards, wishing for is suddenly there. Mm. But at the same time, you're like, this is super precious. Like, yeah. It just slip through my fingers. I think that surrender thing is relevant to so many of these yeah. health issues that you can passionately want to get better and put it out there. I definitely want recovery and visualize it every day. Visualize yeah. what your life would be like if you were healthy and what you'd be doing and really send that intention. But at the same time, dropping out of that anxiety of I have to get it because that anxiety yeah. keeps the problem going. Oh, I'm totally 100% with you on, on all that. You know? I'm curious, Richie, in your illness, did you always know I will get better one day? Or did you go into that despair like I did of, oh my gosh, nothing's ever going to work? I always yeah. thought I was going to get better. Right. I just had to be patient. Right. That was my... Yeah. That was my saying. I was going, right, it's going to be here for a while. Uh, and that's what it is. But when I'm out, I'm going to be positive. And when I need to crash, I'll crash, go home. But I'm not going to be that negative person when I get out in the open because that's not me. Yeah. I'm not wired that okay. way. So, nice. I, I, yeah. Yeah, that's it's quite sounds quite similar to Anaya, um, who had chronic fatigue as well. And, and she said she always knew she was going to get better. And she's like you, very goal oriented. She's an adventure racer. She's, you know, mega fit. I wouldn't necessarily want to go through it again, but I'm so grateful for what I learned and what it brought me um, mm. in terms of my own evolution as a, as a person and what I learned from it and what mm. I gained from it. Nice. Uh, yeah. And, you know, for me, I just knew I was going to be, get better. I didn't know. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't know why I knew that. And I didn't know why I thought that because I certainly hadn't seen any good no. stories about it or anything like that. But I just knew that this wasn't what my life was going to be. Like I just felt it leave. I felt it leave. I did not feel one ounce of the chronic fatigue in my body at all. And we know that one of the most topical illnesses of the year is long COVID, a massively growing area of concern. Um, so far, I've had seven clients with long COVID and all seven have made a full recovery. So that's exciting. And Kezia had, was one of our interesting interviews about it. Um, so let's hear some inspiring words from Kezia. That virus was the virus that just shook me. And um, yeah, it rocked my whole body. It rocked my world. I had every symptom under the sun. In February, I would lay there. I would wake up, open my eyes. That heaviness would set in. And I'd think today's another day of just feeling. Mm -hmm. And it I remember was, that from chronic yeah. fatigue days. And, and, and it was awful. And, and whereas now I wake up and I wake up and I don't even give it a second thought. Listen to your body and yourself. Um, yeah don't gaslight yourself or don't let anyone tell you to just get up and do something. Mm. I think it's more than just getting up and getting out of bed. It's listening to your body and giving yourself time to recover. Yeah. Symptom diaries and talking about symptoms every single day are just yeah. to make your symptoms feel worse. It was upsetting and it was hard, but I don't regret going through anything I went through. Wow. Because 
that's awesome yeah every, everything that um I've gone through made me again cliche but who I am today and sort of humor and positivity yeah. um, came up a bit yeah um, I love that yeah, I, and on the humorous notes, I think my favorite humor note was um, your mate John with no legs, and oh. he was his story um, he, about right. the broccoli in the supermarket. Do you remember that? Broccoli, broccoli, broccoli. It's a great, it's a great game that one, and this story is unbelievable. John is an amazing friend and a guy with no legs. You've got to hear the story because it's unbelievable. <laughs> Check out John. <laughs> I'm pushing my trolley around, blah, blah, blah. And there's this little boy, and he saw me through the shelves. And he must have thought, what the hell's that? And he came running around the corner, and he, and he saw me there. And all of a sudden, he yells out, Mom! Hey, Mom! Look at this monkey! You know, what? Oh. His mother's come running around the corner, and to her embarrassment, here I am laughing my head off, you know. He's a little kid. Like, who cares? Mm. You know, his poor mother has got him by the ear. Shut up, you little bastard. Shut up. <laughs> like, because, because she was embarrassed. Yeah. Right? Because she was embarrassed. Mm. And at the end of one of the aisles, we, we bumped into each other again. And, and he looked at me and he said, what happened to you? And I looked at him. I looked at his mum. His mother is turned ghost white. Like a sheep, like Casper, you know, goes for it. And I looked at him and I said, when I was a little boy like you, I didn't eat all my vegetables at the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I said, my legs got really, really sick and the doctor had to take them away. His mother has gone from being so embarrassed to standing behind this little boy going, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, got but, my trolley. I've got my trolley up at the checkout and I'm paying for my groceries and I look up, you know, three or four checkouts up and here's this lady paying for her groceries and her little boy standing inside her trolley eating frozen broccoli. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> I... <laughs> I forgot about that. He is such a funny human. What a good oh, way to do it. <laughs> oh, that was that that was a moment and a half. Yeah. Oh, only John would say that. He is hilarious. Thanks to you, Richie, for all your great enthusiasm and um all the interesting people that you've brought for us to interview. Yeah, like likewise, Mel. You've you've yeah. you've been a champion on this this note. You've done a lot of the work and I really appreciate you for what you've done. Yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed all our stories this year because we certainly have mm -hmm. and if you've been touched by it and if you were influenced by it and you enjoyed them then thank you for listening and totally. please reach out and show other people that what we do to inspire people that you may know who have got health issues or mental health and well-being so that's us for 2022 appreciate your time love you all yeah we're going to smash it and be safe and be healthy in yep. the Christmas and New Year. We love you all and yep. cannot wait to Absolutely. see you next year. Awesome. I'm on the road, it's bad time, taking control of my